and we are live again thank you for joining in for this stream and with this stream i want to say that the day three of the local hack day share has officially begun and we are back with another stream so uh today is the day three of the challenges so we will be reviewing some submission challenge submissions that we did on the last stream as well as uh, look at a look at a new challenge and try to work our way through it so uh, this is how it will go that we worked on a twitter bot uh, many of you had joined in while we were working on that so we will continue uh, looking at that but now we will look at the final product that is i had gone ahead and made some changes and submitted it finally to the hackathon and after that uh, we will look at another challenge submission that i had uh, done so that was creating a weather application after that uh, we will be taking a look at a new challenge for the day three so just let me take uh do some last minute social stuff and then we will begin Or am i so now i am back for the stream and then let's go so local hack this year i just told uh the three the day three of the hackathon has begun let us look at the schedule so here uh, today for uh, today we have creating a health application there is a chrome dino challenge as well that was pretty cool i would say and then there is a another app builder challenge and a data visualization financial and a blockchain uh, challenge that is upcoming for this day so let us look at some of the challenges that we have before going uh, going to do that let us just look at the leaderboards because that is points matter uh, so eddie hub is currently running second at 3529 points and uh, let me see how many points do i have So, uh, I have 48 points and my rank is 32nd. Pretty good. So, let's just begin. So, today, uh, we will be looking at this Twitter board that we worked on in the last stream. So, if you uh, were there, you would know that we created this uh, stream listener class and we uh, tried to get something working. We were done up to that part when uh, if a user had tweeted something with the hashtag AQI automation bot then our uh, Twitter bot would do something like it would like their tweet and reply with the AQ the air quality conditions at uh, at the place that they wanted the query had to go after the hashtag and that that was how it worked so I had gone ahead and made some refinements so here we are so now we are not looking for the any hashtags I got uh, I had gone ahead and created a new account for the bot uh, that is the EQITWT Twitter bot so I am 
listening for the mentions of this word so if someone mentions the handle aqi twitter bot then only uh our bot will work so here what i am checking is if the tweet starts from the handle aqi twitter bot then we do something otherwise if it is uh, not starting with uh, at aqi bot the handle but if the tweet is from ours then we do nothing otherwise if it is someone else then we uh, tell them that uh, we tweet uh, reply to that tweet saying that uh, giving basically giving them instructions on how to use our twitter bot and if there uh, if it is in the correct format then what we do is uh, we just get the station and data and then if it is an unknown station that for, that means that we did not find any station for that place then we would uh, reply with this tweet otherwise uh, we will just uh, string in we would do some string interpolation and uh, tell them the air quality index at that place uh, so here that is where we are right now and i also created some additional helper files i uh, refactored all the functions to this helper.py file so we have all of the function definitions here and then we have a tweet.py let me see here it is At, in tweet.py we do that uh, cron job thing that after every three hours we do that how are we doing that if you go to the install the install dot uh, shell script install dot sh you would see that i am actually putting a new cron job at the end of the cron tab list that a user has so after so at uh, midnight 6 am 12 uh, 12 noon and at 6 pm this will run but uh, what will run is that the files follow.py and tweet.py will run so in tweet.py we are uh, hard coding these two locations and we will be tweeting updates every three hours for those two locations and that is how that will work and for follow.py what i am having here is we will get a list of all our followers at that same time interval so after every three hours we'll check our follower list and if we are following if we are following someone then we will skip them otherwise we will uh, follow them and i'll i am just printing some stuff for logging it on my server so i also did some exception ha exception handling so i have this try accept uh, uh, clauses here so that is how that works so you can find it on this uh, github repository and this is the handle you can go ahead on twitter right now and uh, tweet at the rate uh, aqi twitter bot followed by the name of the city and this is the handle if you uh, need to do that so you you will see that these are the updates uh, that are coming in from that cron job and if i look at uh, one of my tweets earlier today so right now i just before going live i posted this on twitter that i'm going live and what we will be doing today and then the twitter bot replied with something that uh, it gave me instructions on how to use the twitter bot so i am replying it uh, let's say i want uh so the weather statistics uh, the weather information for london and if i just uh, reply it with london then what should uh, happen is uh, the bot will like this tweet and then reply with it so it has gone ahead and liked my tweet which for some reason it is not showing here but it has liked the tweet and then it has also posted that in the city of london farrington street the united kingdom the aqi is 61 and at this timestamp it was last updated and the source is from the world air quality index project so i will consider that a success and that is it i submitted this on the dev post for the day two and uh, that and i am really happy with where it is right now so uh how do i get inspired to do this exact specific twitter bot i have this other discord bot 
so you would find this on top dot gg uh, i'll just go ahead and paste the link on the twitter chat as well so if you go to this uh, link you will have get to this page the aqi bot uh, list, uh, the directory listing uh, on the discord uh, it is a discord bot listing website so you, you can invite this bot to your server so it will also provide uh, some pollution information so we, i already had that going so that is why i had in mind that i could do a twitter bot as well so that is that thing so let me close that out and this is done we are done with the twitter challenge twitter bot challenge that was not a twitter bot challenge but an automation challenge whatever let's type this and then we also had another uh let's say challenge that was for the weather so i see there are some twitter charts already so shriram has, is watching us hi shriram uh it's great to have you here what else if you have if you want to say something you can put that, them in the chat i'll see them and read it out for them if you would like and so let's go uh further so we had a challenge where we had to build a weather application it could could have been anything uh but i was just wrapping up for the day so i built this quick thing uh, using the open weather api so what is the open weather api so uh, this is that weather api that i uh, we had to use some weather data it could have been anything it could have been historical data as well but the open weather this is some organization they provide uh, these uh, current weather data and the forecast data so i used that and how did i use that uh let me uh, this is the github repository for that and if i go to the routes.js file you would see that i am making a request to the open weather map uh, service and uh, for a given lat long that is the coordinates so yes i would need some information about where you are so and after that i am doing some conversions to show the temperature in the celsius in degree celsius and degree fahrenheit and after that i am showing it so i i have actually hosted it on a website on heroku uh, so this is that uh, application that uh, is using the weather api so let me go to this website again and clear all the permissions let me remove that uh, for location i am asking i am setting it to ask for default so we will be able to see that whatever it asks so just when we reload it asks for our location so i am allowing the location then only this will work otherwise it will not work uh, so yeah that's that's that so if i click on find out it will show me what is the weather right now so it is 28.45 degrees celsius or 83 degrees fahrenheit it is currently hazy outside and this is the pressure in hectopascals humidity in percentage visibility in meters and winds in knots uh that is the basic weather application so that was cool so if you would uh, see here uh, there are uh, there is uh, nothing on this side and no credentials are being leaked uh, through our front end or anything everything is happening on the back end and then i am displaying it and i have this environment example file so you would have to uh, sign up for a weather api key and put, put it in there and that is how it will work so with uh, those out of the way uh then let us take a look at what we are going to do today uh, it is 12 41 in the midnight and i'm streaming life is good and let us do something about it uh let us create a web a web scraping application this is what i have selected today and uh, that is what i have in mind and this web scraping application or uh, what it will do is it is basically having the motto of helping the community they have provided some examples of what this uh could be but i will uh, do some own stuff also so 
that is about it so it will be a web scraping application in python let's get started we have another message from uh Sriram Shikant. they are saying i'm doing a great job with the streams well thank you very much uh i think i should keep it rolling like this and maybe this will hit this will be hit one day at least so uh, let us get started with web scraping application that helps our community for social good uh, so if you are on twitter you can follow me on scientific ghosh and this is the thing that i put out that we are using i completed the review of the aqa twitter board uh, we are we took a look at the open weather map uh, so, uh, application that i worked upon and then let's get started with the web scraping application for social good and again a shout out to uh, shrikant on the chat you are doing great so let's go ahead with our scraping application so for this i will be using python so let us go ahead and create a new directory if i can type correctly uh make their lhd web scraping scraping app or scraper let's say i have in mind i have something in mind for this so that is why i cleverly named it covid scraper yeah if you are having some guesses that is what we are going to do we are going to create something related to covid and building a web scraper out of some of the data so let us go ahead and go to that directory if i can type again so let me open up visual studio code here and once i am done with that i'll move it down and then let us create a new virtual environment to manage our dependencies in python let me go ahead and how did we do this last time we did python 3 minus not minus dash m and uh, vn uh, virtual env using that we create a virtual environment it will take a bit if you are on a slower machine but life is good again uh, we have that environment we source the bin slash activate script so we are now now using the python that is within that virtual environment so if i do pip freeze we don't have any packages installed at this point in time so let us go ahead and install a few packages but should we do that we will see let us just first get to the, get to the code and let's see if we need something so this should be an application so i guess we will be needing some of the modules so let me zoom in and get started with it i'll create a main.py file this will be the entry point of the application and uh, i trust this environment okay it does not like me doing that so i will do it again I need to select a python interpreter but it is not showing the that so I will do it is not selecting a python interpreter let us go to this directly and we will select python 3 ourselves so yes now it has selected the virtual environment python life is good we are using Visual Studio Code and let's get started. So, uh, let us create the main uh, decorator to make it more Pythonic. Let's say so if double underscore name, it is called a tender, I think, uh, is equals to main. Then, what we will do, we will do something. Let's say we will do something with this yes i want the auto formatter please so it has now installed the auto formatter so for uh, doing web scraping we have a python module called beautiful soup 4 it is called beautiful soup 
4 so what is beautiful so 4 it is a library uh, that makes it easy to scrape information from web pages and then we can take out the information from an html page and get started so let us install uh, this module or library i should say pip install beautiful so poor so uh, that with that out of the way we have now uh, beautiful soup for installed in our virtual environment but we haven't yet discussed what we are going to scrape what is the endpoint and from where we are getting data and what kind of data it will be so now let us take a look at that so what i have in mind for uh, this application is uh, the problem statement is that uh, given a set of hospitals uh, in my city and i am from new delhi india so there are a bunch of hospitals in delhi and uh, the uh, the the state government what they are doing is they have put out a portal with the live uh, bed count as in how many beds are available or how many ventilators how many icus are available at uh, various hospitals um, government hospitals and as well as private hospitals i think so they they have made a portal out of that uh, so we will be taking a look at that that only and let us see if we can get the we can scrape some data off of that portal and then uh, we can take a look at that data in a jupyter notebook maybe we can create some data visualization as well because there is a data visualization challenge as well so we will see about how it goes but then let's just see what the portal looks like so it is delhi fights corona.in so this is by the state government not endorsing any particular uh, political party or affiliation but here is uh, the state government portal uh, for covid uh, covid monitoring that they have so they have this hospital bed section so if i click on that uh, it will take me to this page where they are monitoring all the hospital beds and these are the hospital bed names this this is the legend that there are over 50 beds here under 50 beds and no beds at these locations and so there is a total and vacancy column as well that uh uh, these many column uh, these many beds are filled and these many uh, total beds are there so we can use that information as well so we had that with that out of the way and we also have non covid icu beds so uh, it is for those uh, those patients i guess th that who are not having uh, any symptoms of the uh, covid-19 uh, disease uh, this is for that and they also have a similar page for ventilator a uh, ventilator equipped beds i will i am assuming that so this is the data that uh, we are looking at and we want this data in our application so after that once uh, we create the logic for scraping the data off of this portal then we can look at creating it uh, as a full stack web application uh let we can use flask for that but i'll be covering only the web scraping part of it in this stream because uh it is getting late and i need to catch a bit of sleep tonight so that is how it how it is so let me just grab a bottle of water and then i'll be back so up till then enjoy some music
so I am back and let's get to work again. Uh, let us uh, now go to this Python file and what were we doing? We were using beautiful Sufo that I know and then we have to scrape off this data. So let us see how can we do that. So there is a documentation available. Let us look at the beautiful sub documentation. It should be beautiful. So this is Python library. So let us see some help at quick start so we can have the entire string of the html the source the source of that we can put pull that the html source uh, off of a web page using the request module just like we did for the api uh, last in the last stream so using the request module we will have this entire html uh, document string and then we can use beautiful so for so it is called bs4 and we can instantiate that and then we can navigate around that data structure so that is how it is going to be and we can find find all the dom elements the that is the elements on the web page the document the dom tree the document object model tree that is there on every web page uh, we can navigate within that data structure and then we can get the text from each of the elements like if there is a particular button or particular uh, heading we can get that so we have already installed beautiful soap 4 so let us get started with the main things directly so this is uh, one of the urls so let me just put it as a global or i'll just put it here so this is the url that we will be working with and let me import requests because we need the html source so i will import request library and i'll do requests dot get uh, this url and i'll do something called response is equals to so i'll save the response that we get from that get request to the respond uh, variable and then let's just print out what the response is print response dot data and then let's look at it it is saying that requests could not be found so do we have to install requests of course we have to install requests how else are we going to do it so then let us just run python 3 on our main file response object has no attribute name data that i had assumed it would be the case but anyway so response is 200 so we get a response so how did we get access to the response object in other in the other project that we had let us see request module requests response object this is how you uh, when you are working with one of your projects you can do this whenever you get stuck you google that so this is the python request response object and we can have the json representation of that or we can have the text so we need the text representation of this so let us go to this and we print out response.txt and uh, we run that again so this is the so there there we go we have the entire website you can already see some of the hospital names and all so we have everything that we need right now so then let's get going with the other step so at this point in time what we have in our hand is this html string and then we need to get information out of this html so we will need to import beautiful soup and use that so i'll copy a couple of lines from the documentation itself 
uh let us do this and we will instantiate beautiful soup for here let's say resp with response dot text and then let's just print out soup dot title it's the title of the soup so let's run it again and this time we get delifieds corona data hospital beds and that is the correct website title because as you can see if i hover over it this is what is being displayed so we are we made some progress now let us go to the chrome dev tools and why we are doing this uh, we need to get all the information that is here so we need to know what is the class name or of how do we identify each part of the information so if i click on this select an element so uh, you can pull up the dev tools using right clicking and inspect and then you can click on this cursor icon and you will get to see that if i hover over this rajiv gandhi super speciality hospital uh, it is giving me that it is a h5 element with another class it is called vac hyphen over 50 so it has over 50 beds but let us see what else do we have so if i go down on go down go a little bit further scroll down to the end of it uh if we go here dr baba sahib ambedkar hospital it is having a h5 tag again but with a different class name this time but that's okay and i guess that's it for the hospital names and then we have an address element yes that is an address element so we need to get around that so there are address elements for each hospital so this is i guess this is going to be a bit of an issue but the second address element is could be of concern but we will see and this uh this is this is the contact information also uh this is from the number so how do we uniquely identify each uh, tuple so there we go we have a table row itself so this is uh, there is this table with the id of beds and then we have that uh, table heading and the table body then we can just look for uh, these elements within that table row itself so it has made it a bit simpler for us so let us look at how we can get this table so if i look at the documentation if we have to find by id we can do this and we have the id beds right here so we can go ahead and say the beds tape and the beds table will be soup dot find and id with an id is equal to bed it was beds and then we can print out beds table and what will that be okay so it will also be a html tag only so we we can expect to see only the table yes we only get the table because the start at uh, the ending string is a table only and yeah so from within uh, uh, this table we can get the table body object so beds table a uh, find table and from within that we can get the get or we can use find t body and then let's take a look at what it gives us and now we have the table body only and if we go under that in the beds table if we search for all the rows so i will name it uh, rows all the rows 
beds table dot find all and what was that if in the dev tools it was named tr so this is the table row and with within that we have the table data object and there are four table data objects within that so we can first get it and look at a table row only and then we can uh, filter out that information we will work with one one hospital at a time and then we can generalize it so we will find all the table rows and then let's just print out the first row of the table and there we have it this is the first this is the first hospital out of this list uh, this will not be ordered in the sense that in python the list data structure is unordered things could be all over the place that is uh, it is unordered it has no ordering information so even we are not concerned about that at, at this point in time but okay we can go away with that so let's see what else they are trying to tell us so within that we have a table data object so we can iterate over that at a later point in time we can iterate over all rows so uh to do let us put a to do iterate over all rows we will come back to it but then let's just go uh with row is equal to rows the first index i'll fix it for now and within each row we will find all the table data elements so uh, we we can uh, say that data is equals to row dot find all td and then let's just print out the first data element that we have so that will be the uh, hospital information only because otherwise we have this other label and uh, the three beds the vacant beds and the occupied beds uh, we do not have this in this first uh, first cell if we can say so let us go into that uh, this uh, then let us uh, just give it a name let's say it, this is a hospital no let us call this data only and let us name this hospital as data zero and we will put another to do that iterate over all columns but at this point in time let us go into the hospital itself and in this hospital we can find a couple of things we can find the h5 so and the heading 5 element has this has the name of the hospital so uh, let's say hospital dot find h5 and how do we bring out the contents so we can get you use the get text method within that so if we do something like this get text we can we will hopefully see only the name of the hospital so there we have some of the information that we want so that is the first thing that we can get out of this uh this is for a sh show for small only we we have that but we also have uh so this label we are not concerned about that it's at this point in time we can get the address element we will this is for each hospital uh, let's say this is hospital data we will say that hospital is equal to a dict object that is currently not filled and we will say hospital name will be equal to let's just say 
this data right here so this will be the hospital name and the hospital address how we can find the hospital address let's just see we i think we can do something like this only hospital data dot find address there are two addresses so but it should return me the first only i only need the first let us print out hospital and see what do we get so we already have this uh, structured information now that the name is Ames main Delhi and the address is this and then let us uh, take a look at the phone number we will have the phone number again but is that a required and in, uh, useful information we will see so anyway we, let's just get the number information so we will find the first a link tag only we don't have to do anything out of the way so we will just copy this line and paste it again so i'll name it contact dot find a get text so we have the contact information so now does this work for all of the data let us see we can iterate over all the rows now so for rows in rows for row in rows let's say and let me indent the, all of this over and then let's just see so now we have all of this information we have the information for every hospital and we have the address for each hospital and also the contact number wherever there is a contact number i guess we will see when we can visualize it in a, a data frame or something then we can lo take a look at that but for now this is more than what we need so now let us take a look at data one i'll uh, go ahead and just do this for the row one only i'll comment that out and we will do data one we will not print this out this time data one let's just print this print data one let us take a look and this is the label we can find it using this let us say label is equals to that is the data one we can say it is the label data label data is data one dot find class is equal to label dot get text and we can print out the hospital label i guess I want to structure it as far as possible so this is the label and let me print out the hospital dictionary again so we have this hospital and there is a syntactical error let us look at how do we searching by CSS class how we can do this so it is class underscore because class is a reserved word in python so we have this let us go further we have this out of our way we can now take a look at what is the data one what is in the date no we are done with data one let us take a look at what is data two data two i guess it should be this thing only the total number of beds that there are so yeah dot uh, we will find the td dot find td and we'll get the text and we can put this in the hospital total hospital total beds
and we'll say this is the total bed total number of beds that there are it would be great if we can for store this in a numerical format for if you want to analyze this uh, later down the line uh, let's see how we can do that but we'll see if if this is the total bed information this should be castable to an integer i guess and that should work it does not have any get text method why so none type object uh i guess it was td on uh no it was something else no it was a table data object only okay we can directly do this yes we have that so let us uh, print out the hospital object now so there are total beds 11 total beds and the vacant beds is that the vacant yeah let us just name it vacant and total for simplicity and and then let's just view this one more time and then we will get to go on our real application we can now save this data also we will say we i i am not going to iterate over all of this because otherwise it will be hard to structure our data i can replace the hospital data with this data zero thing so we can have one less object and we will find this we will uncomment this line delete this line and we can now print hospital and we will have the vacant and the total number of beds that there are so that is looking good now let us uh, see how we can save this as a save this in a table somewhere i'll be saving this in a csv file that can be opened in any spreadsheet uh, viewing application or even in some of the data analysis packages that there are so i'll be using csv uh, right csv and i am i'll be using a library called pandas so we can do this uh, we can use that uh, two csv method in the pandas library so we can go to the geek for geeks website and this is how it is done we import the pandas uh, library and uh, we can uh, construct a data frame out of each of this and then we go we can do this ourselves as well if we can print everything and pre uh, append a comma to the end of each line but uh, let us do it this way constructing a data frame from dicts let us first search for that construct data frame from list of dictionaries we can construct using a list of dictionary itself so let us first install the pandas library import why am i writing import i should write pip install pandas and uh, once that is done we can go ahead and import pandas this is the scraping part of this application so while once i import pandas spd we can uh, go and do something like uh let us we have need to have a list of all the dictionaries so at this point in time we were just 
treating one specific hospital and we were iterating over that ideally we would uh, need to have a different list for this so let's say hospitals so this is the empty list that we have and we can add to this hospitals dot append hospital and once that is done we can now go ahead and say pd dot data frame from hospitals and call it df and then let's print df dot head and run python so we now have this uh, tabular format that the name address and total and vacant this is a table that we have we can uh, we will look at this in a jupyter notebook if we need to do some data visualization or on top of it but for now this is fine for us because we are scraping the data we are more interested about saving this information on our desk rather than uh, how to gain insights from it at this point in time so i'll do something like df.2csv and we will write it in hospital beds dot csv or we can do something like this uh, we have three different things right there are ventilators and non icu beds and the overall structure seems similar to me let us just do this thing uh, data frames there could be three urls then data sets let's say data sets will be uh, there will be three data sets one will be a hospital beds data set hospital beds data set and there will be a non covid icu beds data set let me just copy it from the url then we can uh, use that somewhere else as well and for the ventilators we can do something similar now we have this so instead of this we can go ahead and do something like data set make it an f string and we can do for d in data sets and iterate over every data set that there is we will end up with three different files let us say data set let make it a f string and there will be there we will have it there we will have it and let's just put it in a try catch block otherwise if there is an error this will give us a hard time let's put it in a try catch block and for catching we can use the catch exception as as e and not catch exception in python world it is except ex, except exception as e we can print that out we can print the error if we have any error so let us uh, now run this uh, scraper data set is not defined obviously it is not defined it is d not data set and it is doing some work and it is done let us see what files do we have okay we messed up because we did not provide a period for the file extension 
for this file extension we need this and let's just put up a message that we saved something like saved d.csv then we, at least we will know that something is happening let's just run this again it saved all of this data okay then let's uh, take a look so yes we have this data we have this data as well and this data as well i call that a success okay so we have the data our scraper worked correctly now we can uh, do this on at the start of every day or we can do this uh, early we can have something like uh i don't know uh let us do this uh, we there is another cool website for cron uh, the the cron uh i guess this is the cron tab dot guru website so we can have at every minute no let's just say at minute zero every hour or let's just cycle through this this is also great stuff that on sunday or at four five every day at every minute past hour four we can do this otherwise we can do this on at minute one at every hour we can do this the possibilities are endless then but we will take a look at that sometime later uh, so we have the data right now and web scraping is done uh, then let's just try to create a create an api from where we can view this data from as well okay before that let's just create a new jupyter notebook here uh, create a jupyter notebook and i'll save it as notebook dot ipy notebook ipy kernel should be installed and it is now installing ipy kernel and once that is done we can connect to that kernel so that will be fine so here this is an interactive way to visualize things so i'll import pandas as pd once i import pandas as pd i'll press ctrl enter and i'll create a new code cell and then let us say uh, we will df is equals to pd dot read underscore csv we have the read csv uh, read csv method already and what files do we have we have this file and we can take a look at the top five entries here and these are the top five entries so there is this spurious column right here so how can we stop saving the spurious column there to csv uh, skip index we can yeah we can do this skip index is there any option for that compression infer client terminator none escape character no index index equals to true is uh, by default so let us change it to index equals to false here so that will give us some more comfort while working with the data let's just run the scraper once again and once that is done i will load this again so now we have this 
so let us go ahead and do this now what do you want to do so there are some nuns already not a number this is a null value or something let's investigate so there is this ambedkar hospital so there is no address for that why is it so is there no address for it in the original database let us look at it ambedkar so there is no address so we will not be able to have that address for obvious reasons so uh, that is how we look at the uh, data we can find out uh, how group by if you want to group by how many central government hospitals are there how many the limit is endless so that is how that can be looked at now let us create a flask api quickly flask api tutorial how to create that uh, creating web apis with python and flask let us look at that so we will install flask this is a for creating apis this library we are done with the scraping part that we have for social good we have created a scraper application that scrapes off the data so we have someone in the chat no that's yet another twitch spam bot i guess so we will ignore that person and install flask we have installed flask here and let's get done with it implementing our api we can import flask i will my i will call this scraper dot py scrape scraper dot py and i'll call this main dot py now if name is equals to main then what do we have we have to import flask next we have to instantiate flask and do something like this let me just copy and paste it from the documentation so we have a get route and that is returning this string right here i'll change it to ok and we will still get that and it is running the application and how is it supposed to run okay we have to uh, run that application so it will be something like python main.py debugger is active it is running correctly we can see that so that worked what flask does we know about that and we can have this request and jsonify also because we will be will we be doing anything with all of that information let's just see but why are we doing this in the first place we can trigger yeah we can trigger it of course we can trigger it we can just do something like this whenever there someone calls a refresh and uh, then we can go ahead and let's just say this was named this was a function whose name was a def scrape and defining a function that could scrape itself and not scrape itself uh, it can do the scraping for us so we will do if name underscore main then i'll call scrape if it is run individually otherwise we can do something like this we can we can import scraper 
and we can do scraper dot scrape and we can put that in a try except block if uh let's just see app dot config debug equals to true then we will send return the string representation of the error else let's just say we done we could not do this thing return error encountered and otherwise it will scrape and return successfully scraped ran successfully so we can do this and uh, see that if it is working so we can go ahead and say slash refresh that is not allowed for obvious reason it is a post request so uh, we can do curl post request right curl post How do we make a curl post request? We can just do this. Do something like this. This is how we make a curl post request. So I am creating a new terminal window and I'll just zoom in a bit and I'll do a post and in the URL I'll have HTTPS no http double slash localhost 5000 refresh and this will trigger the scraper and it ran successfully and we can see uh, whether that is true or not let's just see where it was last updated and it's currently 135 so it's 135 so this data is super new we can obviously do something like this we can save this in a uh, another folder let's just say and this is the data folder and i'll copy i'll move over everything that ends in csv to the data folder so now we have like this we have it like this so now we can save this to the data folder and if we run it again this time i'll run the scraper directly so it saved all of these files in this so we can create a bash script that can, that will uh, put this in the cron cron tab for us so let me just look at one of my projects for which I created this so I created this for the AQI Twitter board and the install.sh we I'm just basically copying this shell script install.sh we can do this and we did not have the requirements dot we do not have the requirements dot txt yet but we'll see about that and attribute uh, let's run it using this run script let us create a run script that will do something that will run the api for us so that we have an endpoint so if we are not uh if we are at a remote location we can use the url to trigger a refresh let's do this every hour 
and for the run sh run dot sh i'll do something like this directly instead of index.py we will have main.py and for the run job that was uh, i am using the run job from the twitter bot so we can have for this this run scraper my mouse is misbehaving at this point in time so let's just call it scrape.sh scraper and that should do it so now let's just try it out once again for the one last time if we uh we have to first mark these files as executable not setup.sh install.sh let's just mark everything as executable we will do install.sh there is no requirements .txt file so i am not surprised let me just go to the cron tab and delete these two entries that just created and i am doing pip freeze and i'll save it to requirements.txt let's just see the requirements.txt perfect then let's run this install script once again yes it ran completely fine so if i now run the scrape.sh directly this will run and what else do we have this is the run scrape but it is not uh, it is now scraped already so let me just fix my cron tab manually and that should do it so it will run this this is the api that will run every time you want to trigger something that this can run in the background itself and for all other purposes we have the scrape.sh script this will be very helpful because this will show us the number of vacant and uh let's just say the seats that there are vacant or not let's just now go to the the, the python notebook that we had because i want to do some data visualization on top of it so uh let's we will need the matplotlib here so for matplotlib you can go to the terminal and install matplotlib pip install matplotlib so in matplotlib what we will do is we will create a let's say a category chart of uh how many central government hospitals are there and all we did this for hospital beds dot csv but it is you you also know that this is uh this can be extended to the non-icu beds and the ventilators as well so we will take a look at that how do we go ahead uh, we have this we are importing pandas spd let us import matplotlib as well import matplotlib dot pyplot splt we'll do that do this again and now for let's see what we are going to do pandas group by df dot group by by none or by a list of labels or by a label so i will group by a list of labels let's say label why not and the f is not defined did we run it already the file is not found obviously it is not found we will print this this is a group by object so we have to 
configure this to data frame dot mean if i if i that uh, we only need the total and the vacant we are not interested about the context so let us assume this is uh this is giving us the num this is giving us a number so we can fix that and we will run the scraper again and this time let us load the database again and i'll do this but i guess pandas is trying to uh, trying very hard to just uh get this contact also but this is uh, useless information so the delhi government has around the mean number of hospitals i guess that there is or count let's just say there are five delhi government hospitals seven seven essential government hospitals and one of four private hospitals and this is pretty evident uh by this so we can use this information also that uh if we group group it by the label and take out the mean or we can just put on the two let's just say name and the label and put it this is how we do it yes this is how we do it so we can uh, tabulate this information in a bar chart let's say or pie chart plt dot pie or dot plot it is plotting uh, directly so we can otherwise we can do something like this it is giving us some value error x must be a one dimensional yes we know that so data frame group by pie chart in pandas so what they have is they are cutting it but that is something i am not willing to do kind is equals to pi we can do something like this dot plot kind is equal to pi either the y column or the subplots true y's will be the name what does it need for the y attribute so it is that's what i assumed it needs the name okay it was something else uh i guess this is case sensitive yes so uh, we have this thing that central government uh has these many hospitals and all this is pretty evident i guess this suits our needs so this is one of the data visualization that we could get out of this and um, this will be same for everything every other sheet that uh, there is i guess if they have a ventilator or there are none let's just see if there are let us uh, iterate it for all the data sets 
and I'll just copy it from here. We have all of these data sets. And for D in data sets, we can do something like this. So yeah, the data is pretty much identical, but now there are some differences and I see them anyway, the title will be D itself, hospital beds, this is for non-COVID ICU beds and this is for ventilators. That is one of the visualizations that we could have done. So let me just save it and I'll upload it onto GitHub repository and then we will call it a day. Let me create a readme file and hospital bed data scraper let's just say that source the government portal that there is we'll say that and uh, what we could have done was we could have made a front end for this and we could have listed all the unique hospitals that there are and depending on that we could have done this data visualization on the front end itself and if someone would have clicked on if someone would have selected the name of the hospital from the list then they could have say uh, they could have uh, observed or noted how many uh, beds there are vacant for for that particular hospital and that is it so let me just initialize a git repository here and too many active changes i know about that so that is why i'll go git ignore of pycache now it will not be so horrible and let me restart the extension host okay it still does not like that because we have the env file env folder in our git repository that is why it is complaining about that let me then delete this vs code folder and we only have these folders these changes to commit I'll commit these changes gc that is uh i have some aliases set for aliases aliases whatever uh, we can do an initial commit i'll go ahead on github create a new repository let's say lhd covid scraper and create this repository move over to the ssh because i i like to use ssh for my repositories i'll add this remote and i'll do get push origin main then what do we have in front of us we have to submit this on the week long dev post let us go to that COVID. Is that how do we spell? How do we spell COVID? Yeah, that is how we spell COVID. COVID hospital. COVID bed vacancy scraper. 
and the elevator pitch i'll work on this later after the stream and in place of the github we can uh, probably do a github link here put a github link and then let us say that lhd go with scraper this is the link that we have to submit i'll put it here it was built with python beautiful super and pandas matplotlib jupyter i guess jupyter is not there but you get the idea i'll do this thing also after the stream and we will do this for a web scraping application that helps your community i'll click save and continue and i'll click say, uh, accept the terms and conditions i'll submit this project once i am i am done with all of those other pieces of bits and pieces of information uh, but uh, that is it uh, for today then or tonight we created a coronavirus bed vacancy scraper uh, or say visualizer application this is one of the visualizations that that is already there uh, on the jupyter notebook and this this will also be viewable by anyone who visits this repository so there we go the data is available in this format as you can see uh github is trying to fit all of the information and show it as in a tabular form because this is a csv file so it is doing a great job at this point it is showing us whatever the information that there is in a tabular format and that was it so let me take a look at the leaderboard again if there is any change but there won't be much change because i was not doing anything at this point in time i was uh, sharing about what i was doing lhd local hack day uh, share event is more about sharing uh, we already had uh, previous seasons we had a uh, local hack day learn local hack day build and this is local hack day share and this is all about sharing and uh, if you have not yet registered for the local hack day please do register at this website localhackday.mlh.io and if you have to join a guild uh, do join git uh, not github edihub uh, because edihub is a really great guild and very inclusive community and uh, awesome uh, we have lot loads of awesome people over there uh, we love open source and we love hacking on our projects so i'll call it today and let's uh, let me just take a look at the chat if there is any other chat message that i might have missed no so goodbye let me pull up some good music track again and we'll meet again <laughs>